Good morning, First Christian Church. Today is April 25th, 2021. If you have not done so, please download the worship bulletin, which is found online. Your worship participants for today are as follows. We have Carson Woolridge, we have William Garner, Jennifer um, Hoster, and we have um, James Brooke Cavert, myself, and Swati White, and we have Kathy Westbrooks, um, the musician. A um, couple of announcements to make you aware of. Sorry, I could have been a little bit more organized, just saying. Stewardship meeting tomorrow at 7 o'clock um, via Zoom. And next Sunday, the worship service will take place on the lawn, which is a free concert. Um, because of a free concert that will be performed by the Atlanta Musicians Orchestra. First Christian Church is an open and affirming congregation. We welcome everyone into full participation into the life and the membership of the church. 
inspired and informed by God's love, mercy, and justice, we are perfect, per purposefully involved in healing and helping our community and our world. We covenant with God and the greater community to nurture a spirit of love and service to our neighbors, honor the differences and fellowship in the breaking of bread, actively striving to honor each other's race, age, sexual orientations, gender, identity, nationalities, ethnicity, marital status, physical and mental abilities, family configurations, political affiliations, economic circumstances, and theological perspective. We truly do welcome all. Welcome. for our call to worship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores me. He restores me. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I will feel no evil before you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil, my cup with flowers. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. In the unison prayer of invocation, gracious God, it is so good to be here. We have been a shepherd. It is to be here in your house. Your table prepared. Your word inspires us. Your water refreshes and anoints us. Your goodness and mercy abounds. Savior, like a sheep. Amen. 
So here, here's to, here today's scripture. We have three scriptures today. The first one comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his Mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now from Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will search them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks where, when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited places of Israel. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed upon rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. For the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. And now from John 10, 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have no other sheep that do not belong, I, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. 
I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. That was lovely. Welcome home. It's good to be here with you today. It's an honor and a joy to, to work with such a strong pastoral worship leadership team that I don't get to speak until the sermon. <laughs> Antswa White Birch is commuting from Charleston. Now, now, our church is a hybrid congregation. We are, we are in person and online. And so uh, one of the joys of being a hybrid church is we're not afraid to have elders who live in other states. 
So when, when Antoine announced he was moving to Charleston, we were like, yeah, you can move, but you're taking your eldership with you. <laughs> we're not letting you go. And so we've held on to him with tight fists. Yay, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for coming and being here, leading us in worship this morning. We're also delighted that Jennifer Hassler is one of our worship leaders this morning. Um, as you know, Jennifer is a full-time professor at Georgia Tech and is also uh, our former seminary intern. And she has a Master of Divinity degree from Candler School of Theology. And she has announced that she is interested in being ordained a disciples pastor. And so we celebrate this and our church has started the process to walk with Jennifer to begin the process of, of the coming in care of our congregation for ordination. So she's already met with the eldership and, and aced that interview and passed unanimously. And now the eldership will present Jennifer Hassler to the church board and, if, and you will pass that. And then the church board will pass you to the congregation and you will pass that. And then the congregation will present her to the region of Georgia, to the Commission on Ministry. For ordination. It's quite a process, but it's a good and worthy process. And, and that way we are sure, God is sure, the church is sure, and we call people into fullness of their calling. So Jennifer, we are walking with you. Thank you so much for your leadership today. Our sermon is entitled, Even Though I Shall. Feast, my friends, feast on the justice and goodness and mercy of God. One of my favorite stories in the classic church tradition is that old time story of the little boy who turns five years old and his name is Timmy and he starts kindergarten and his mother walks him to kindergarten every morning and after a week of this, he announces to her that he's old enough and big enough to go to school by himself, that he doesn't need his mother to walk into school every morning. He wants to be like the big boys. And his mother loves him very much, but she's also very worried that she doesn't think it's a good idea for a five-year-old to be walking to school by himself every morning. So she approaches her next-door neighbor, Nancy, who has a toddler, and says, you know, Nancy, every morning you take a walk with your toddler, any chance you might just kind of follow along surreptitiously behind Timmy on his way to school? And... Nancy says, sure, that's not a problem. I need to get my steps in, and I'll be happy to do it. So Timmy's walking to school with his friend Ronnie for a week, and they, they notice that Nancy and her toddler are ducking behind trees and walking behind them on their way to school. And after a week of this, Ronnie says, hey, Timmy, you notice that uh, there's this strange lady walking behind us and ducking behind trees. Do you know anything about this? And Timmy says, yeah, yeah, I know who she is. And Ronnie says, well, what's going on? And Timmy says, well, that's, that's Shirley Goodnest and her little girl, Marcy. Ronnie says, well, what, what's going on with that? And Timmy says, well, you know, every night my mother makes me say the 23rd Psalm because she's worried about me. She wants me to be cut tight with God. And, and every night we say this prayer, and you know in that prayer it says, Surely goodness and Marcy shall follow me all the days of my life. And Timmy says, So I guess I'll just have to get used to it. That's the story of our lives. We're just going to have to get used to God's goodness and mercy following us all the days of our lives. As we feast on the justice and goodness and mercy of God. One of the blessings of pastoral ministry is that I have had so many amazing opportunities to preside at weddings and funerals and memorial services. And just as for the record, we've got one for Mary Ellen Fountain coming up on May 8th, Saturday, May 8th at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary for Mary Ellen Fountain. When I meet with the family before a funeral or a memorial service, I ask, what scriptures would you like shared in the service? And as you can well imagine, invariably, so many 
wonderful, amazing families of God say the 23rd Psalm. Far and away, the 23rd Psalm is the most requested scripture that I have ever heard asked of for a uh, memorial service. Far above any text that's secular or spiritual. What is it about this particular psalm that touches our hearts? That touches our minds? That comes to the forefront in times of crisis and doubt? In times of love and loss? Let me, let me just throw some, some spaghetti against the wall and you feel free to chime in or post on what you think it might be. I wonder if the 23rd Psalm is so popular because when we were children, we had to memorize it to get that gold star on the Sunday school poster board. Um, and the, consequently, the 23rd Psalm stuck in our heads. And it's never left us, returning again and again to the forefront of our minds and our hearts and our souls in times of grief and loss, in times of despair and challenge, we remember. Could it be that the 23rd Psalm is so memorable because it's so poetic? It's so memorable. It's the nature of the verse, the rhythmic way the shepherd's song rolls off the tongue, the way its metaphors capture our imagination. Could it be that the 23rd Psalm is celebrated because it echoes with a voice of confidence. There is an incredible amount of confidence in this passage. There's a sense of assurance. I know, I trust, I believe. Singing and praying with this attitude of hope, a hope that's grounded in a confidence that the darkness shall be permeated by the light of God, that God will be with us even in our darkest and most challenging moments in life. Could it be that the 23rd Psalm comes to our minds because we equate it with King David? As you know, King David is attributed to being the author of this passage, and we can relate to King David in so many ways because he was flawed, he was imperfect, he was brave, he was faithful, he was authentic, he dedicated himself to God, he fell away, he returned again and again, and it speaks of our lives in so many ways. Could it be we can relate to the 23rd Psalm because it's so delightful to our ears? Because it's got such a deep felt joy. If you read this passage and when you memorize and you think about it, this joy comes to the forefront because you can relate to this sense of laying down in tall grass sitting beside a clear running stream, being anointed by the holy for a lifelong journey, whether it's at your baptism or at your ordination to the ministry, you're filled with this sense of connectedness with the holy for a lifelong journey of risk and passion, of giving yourself, offering a sense of service above self, could it be it invites us to feast on the justice and the goodness and the mercy of God? King David would have been very familiar with the prophet Ezekiel. He would have had the Torah in front of him. He would have had Ezekiel's uh, prophecies in front. And Ezekiel equated God's love as like that of a shepherd. He would have, King David would have understood that the prophet Ezekiel pointed out that just as a shepherd guides and protects and cares for his or her or their flock, so too does God lovingly look over and care for us. Ezekiel said, and Jennifer, you read it so beautifully, Ezekiel said, for thus says the Lord, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks, when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. 
I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Feast, says Ezekiel, on the justice and goodness and mercy of God. What do you think? What is it about the 23rd Psalm that connects to our souls in such powerful ways? Is it because we can relate to the fact that we have walked through the valley, the shadow of death? We, at times and places and moments in our lives, have been so afraid, so very afraid. Yet we have also known deep down that we are to fear no evil. For God is with us every step of the way. The presence of God is not to deny us our fears, because not all fear is bad. Let me say that again. The presence of God is not to deny us our fears, because not all fear is bad. Some fear helps us and sustains us and keeps us going in a good direction. But rather, God is nigh to help us to cope and address our fears, all the while seeing us clear into the tomorrows yet to come. If and when we forget our way, if we waver, if we wander, if we get distracted, if we get divided from the path like lost sheep, the 23rd Psalm serves as God's word to remind us to be reeled back in, to come back home, to come back to where God is, where God invites us to belong. God, like a good shepherd, like a loving God, guide is with us. In that amazing grace, in this assurance of faith, we find immeasurable comfort. I'm putting to words what you feel, that we feel this comfort. The United Church of Canada has a creed that draws upon this text, this faith saying, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with me. Yes, through the valley of the shadow of death, we walk and we fear no evil. We feast on the justice and the goodness and the mercy of God. The Reverend Dr. Bill Weber, his full name is George W. Bill Weber, um, he's a former president of New York Theological Seminary. He was a well-known leader in urban ministry. He was born in 1920. He passed away in, 19, in uh, 2010 at age 90. He was best known for his passion, his work with faith-based justice organizations and for the cause. And Bill Weber helped to shape the perspective of so many generations of Protestant clergy who were engaged in urban ministry. Countless fellow Christians have been blessed to witness his selfless work and teaching ministry in East Harlem and around New York State and across the country. I myself consider myself uh, richly blessed to have been raised in the light of his life. Among the many gifts and skills of Bill Weber was his gift as a teacher. He loved to teach the faith. Bill Weber taught Sunday school in his congregation. He taught students in seminary. He taught incarcerated men how to be pastors. He loved to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I heard Bill Weber preach, and his sermon was so memorable because he chose as his key passage the 23rd Psalm. And he shared that every day, he said the 23rd Psalm. And in every worship service he led, they included the 23rd Psalm. And in every aspect of his ministry, the 23rd Psalm was front and center, was a core part of who he was and his faith. And he preached this sermon and he talked about his tremendous confidence in God. And then he, then he got vulnerable and he shared that periodically he had this nagging feeling that many of us may experience now and then, 
This feeling of wondering if he ever made a difference. You ever have that feel? Just not quite sure. All the energy and love and everything I've done for God, if it's made any difference. And then he told a story about how he was in his study one day and a, a young man walked in. And this young man had grown up in Bill's church and had been in his youth group and his Sunday school classes. Now he was all grown up and he just returned from boot camp where he was being trained to be an army ranger. And this young soldier said to Bill, Pastor, let me tell you what happened at boot camp. They took me and my platoon up in an airplane and they put on parachutes on our backs. And they said, when you jump out the plane, count to 10 and then pull the cord and the parachute will open above you. I was so scared, I didn't want to jump. And I said so. And a sergeant led me to the door of the airplane and kicked me out. And I was so scared while I was falling that I didn't do anything I was supposed to do. I didn't count to 10. I didn't pull the cord. And I was just falling. And I was so afraid. And then I remembered that prayer you taught me in Sunday school. That prayer I heard in worship every Sunday. And I started to pray the 23rd Psalm. And I calmed down. Because God was with me. And I pulled that cord and the parachute opened and all the way down to the ground as I floated to the earth, I said the 23rd Psalm over and over again. Would you like to share it with me? Now, I learned it in the King James Version. That's the version I was raised with. You share it in whatever version you know. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. We shall feast on the justice and the goodness and the mercy of God. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Even though I have died and been resurrected so many, many times, more times than I can count, I shall trust in the Creator and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Even though I've been oriented and disoriented and reoriented by the grace of God, I shall persevere with the help of God. Even though I sit in the presence of mine enemies at a table that the Lord prepares, I shall remember that, thy anoint, that thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Even though I wrestle with relationships that seem more polarized than ever before, I shall trust in the anointing power of God's baptism to lead us forward and to bring us together one day. Even though the Lord calls me forth to be a reconciler and agent of grace, I shall draw deeply upon the overflowing well of God's call to loving service. Even though I wonder whether goodness and mercy and justice do abide at times, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, from which I draw so much strength. We shall feast in the house of the Lord on the justice and the goodness and mercy of God. You know, not too long ago, our congregation hosted a very special worship service. We recognize that there are caregivers, nurses, and doctors in our community who are wounded healers, particularly those who work in the hospice 
I don't want to say the word industry, the hospice ministry. That's a much better term. If you think about those who are hospice caregivers, 100% of the people they minister to pass on from this life to the next. And so who takes care of the caregivers? Who heals the wounded healers? So we decided to host a service for hospice caregivers and doctors and nurses in our community. And we looked to the late Reverend Adage Green Pastures to take the point. She planned the worship service. She got us all together. We gathered in the chapel on weekday morning when the caregivers could be present. And during the service, each hospice caregiver was invited to come down the center aisle of the chapel, to come forward to be healed and prayed over, to have oils on their forehead and the laying on of hands and prayer. And two elders were appointed to guide each person down the aisle, one to walk alongside each side. And Adash Green Pastors told us that one elder was goodness and the other elder was mercy. Because you see, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And that's just something we're going to have to get used to. All power be to the Creator and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Lord is my shepherd. Of course, Jesus in John's Gospel says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And in fact, Jesus did lay his life down for us. Jesus continues to be our shepherd, leading us to rest in green pastures, to bring rest to our souls. He restoreth my soul. We come together as community, beloved community, following this one shepherd, allowing our souls to be restored. And we're just thankful for all the blessings that have come from this community. We're thankful also for all, the, for all of the gifts to this community and those who continue to give. And, we, and for those who continue to give also online, mail, by all sorts of forms. And we're just thankful for all of that. But coming to this space, Thou preparest the table in, from, in the presence of mine enemies. God comes to us exactly where we are, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our brokenness and difficulties. And we come to a table that God has prepared for us. And Jesus also said, there will be one flock, one shepherd, Know that all are welcome at this table. All here, no one is excluded. Christ invites everyone, including those who may not be this community or denomination, including those who may have been excluded elsewhere. Christ is here for you. All are welcome. So let us feast on the justice, goodness, and mercy of God. Let us pray. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing, one cup of blessing which we bless. Prince of peace, we who eat your flesh and drink your blood has eternal life, and you will raise us up on the last day. I thank you for the everlasting life that you have promised us. As we partake in communion, you have kept us all these years here on earth, and we know that the greater reward is resting with you. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread and broke it and given thanks and he said this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after dinner he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So join me in our unison prayer of commission. God our Lord, we thank you for this supper, shared in the spirit with your son Jesus, who makes us new and strong, who brings us life eternal. We praise you for giving us all good gifts in him and pledge ourselves to serve you, even as in Christ you have served us. Let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen. Amen.